making an artwork has always been about having a process of discovery. So you have this sense of the moment, a real moment in time of where you discover something that you think, well, or you know, will never exist again. So you wonder about how it's made, you wonder how it's gonna fall apart, because it's so married to the building that it could never exist again. The question was, how do you want to marry to the building? That was the beginning with a kind of a river that wandered through the building, that seeped and found spaces in ways that were surprising and that really were experiments with how the viewer would interact. There was an image making system. So a video would make a sculpture, a sculpture would make a video and they're so intertwined that you're constantly in this state of seeing things in their own becoming. And you're sort of the witness to these live events. And a lot of the way it was conceived of was to create these intersections that happen in the moment that you don't expect. And you have this constant sense of anticipation, of serendipity, of incident the thrill of not knowing how your environment is going to evolve around you is I think also how we mark time in many ways, especially emotional time, especially psychological time. I wanted to kind of recreate that in the landscape through an artwork. With each of the paintings, you move through those bays differently. You're supposed to move horizontally through that space because there's strings with lines. And with the sculptural pieces, it was very much about how you move through the bays. So with Slice, this piece, you, um, it beckons you into the space. It's actually part of the piece in the bay before it. And actually, this, was, this is one of the most, the, the bay before it is really interesting to me because all of the sculpture is really only set up to, to reveal a kind of hidden garden that comes in shadows through the actual bay. It's a perfect example of a sculpture that's really a tool. It's actually at the service of doing many things outside of itself. So it melts away the architecture, it marries with the architecture, it nests into the architecture, and it plays with how it had to level itself. With Slice, you don't understand when you see it that you're actually seeing the outside of the work until you get inside and, and you realize, oh, I'm actually, now I'm in the piece. I was only looking at the back of the piece. And in that bay, when you're looking at it, you're seeing video projected with broad daylight behind it because you have this incredible skylight behind it. And then you see the sculptural part of the piece, the scaffolding actually kind of merge with this art deco ceiling. Um, and you see that it's really nested into the space itself. So the projectors are actually the only thing that's standing on the bay, the apron, where the art usually is. So the tool actually becomes, you know, sort of the artwork that's standing there in broad daylight, but you've turned your body and you're nested within a bay. So you're actually standing sort of almost, you're standing where the artwork would be. If you were a painting in this building, that would be how you lived. I wanted to kind of give that to the, to the viewer. My interest in images uh, right now is this merging of the image and the object where we can't remember if we've seen something in real life or we've seen it digitally and this kind of confusion of the two. And what that does to language, what that does to relationships, even how it really makes us question what it is to be human, what are things that we value, how it can change things like how we fall in love, how we die, you know, how we reproduce. The, these very fundamental things are being affected by this new language. The other thing that was that an experiment about, you know, video that was interesting to me was it's, you rarely see video in, in, in bright light. There's something weirdly familiar, but also odd about seeing these almost mirage-like, almost ghost-like presence of images in complete happenstance you know, a marrying with a wall, a corner, a chair. The boundaries of an artwork are never framed, that they spill not only from here, but out the door to the street, to the park. But to remind people of that, you're a witness to the work itself. It's all right there. None of the projections are hidden. All of the tools that you're, you're used to make what you see are also equally 
the art. And then it, the artwork becomes a, a system of, of, of making itself. Because I'm interested in destabilizing the viewer and them being in a constant process of trying to restabilize themselves. They're teetering in, in the state of understanding how something works and then not understanding how something works. Realizing that the way it works is actually very, very simple, but then also realizing how potentially profound it is that it is that simple. And you see that in, in certain pieces, like in Slice, you'll see the, all of the images are printed out from video and then the actual video is being projected on top of it. So there's one second where they meet. You have this desire that they'll meet and you see this throughout, throughout the show. You see this in the pendulum over the salt. You have this one image that's actually the sun and the moon moving at a rate that is almost the same as the pendulum, but they have no relationship. But you want them to marry. And then they're hovering over this incredibly tactile sculptural material, which is salt. The salt is at the angle of repose, but the top of it, because the pendulum obeys gravity, is completely flat. So while there's a lot of fiction in that piece, there's also fact. And it's this kind of tension between what is fiction and what is fact, what is digital, what is material. To make you want these things to meet together, that's actually what's, you know, not there. That's what you bring to it. So the last bay, which is things caused to happen, Oculus, I really wanted to have all this energy to be held in a very small piece. As you come up the ramp, you can see it as I wanted your head, you'd almost feel like you entered, your, your whole mind was going to be entering into this piece. And the wall in between is this one bay, when it hits this wall, it actually dissipates and turns into its digital sort of skeleton before you get into the final room, Timekeeper. The architecture itself gets colonized by the piece and disappears, and you are in a dark room, and you are really part of the piece. And by the time you enter Timekeeper, you don't even realize that you had made a decision to become part of it. I've always thought of my work as, as landscape, but not depicting what landscape looked like, but how landscape behaved. So that to think about landscape as growing, dying, entropic, as re rebirthing, and that the work itself was doing that live. I'm thinking these things like fire, water, oceans, mountains, and horizon lines. I mean, the horizon line, it's how we locate ourselves, you know, historically, you know, how we locate ourselves in time and space. We have our own internal clocks. Our bodies are internal clocks. We are timekeepers. And so all of these references to horizon lines, to suns, to the passing of time is really, in my mind, a reference to the idea that we are, our marriage with landscape is a kind of timekeeper. We are both in marriage with landscape in a kind of evolving, growing and dying process all the time.